Hi everyone. Welcome to our monthly program, Catholic Charities Works, where we share information about the programs and services of Catholic Charities of Central Colorado. My name is Rochelle Schlort, and I'm the Chief Communications Officer with Catholic Charities. Today, I'm so excited to welcome our guests, Fiona Hahn and Velda Baker, who are faith community nurses with Centura Health. And they're gonna to talk to us a little bit about what they do. Uh, Velda has been at Marion House for, mm -hmm. she works at Marion House for three days a week, mm -hmm. and Fiona works at Helen Hunt Campus for two and a half days a week. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank Great. Um, so just to start off, can you share a little bit of information about how you ended up as a faith community nurse working at Catholic Charities? Oh, it's a long journey. <laughs> Something I'd never even thought about or knew about till about eight years ago. And I took the foundations course, which prepares you to become a faith community nurse. And it's a specialty recognized by the American Nurses Association. So I took the class thinking I would use it in my home church. Well, I also was working at Penrose at the time and saw that there was an opening and one of the professors of the course was our supervisor at the time. And so she asked if I'd be interested in shadowing one of our faith community nurses at Westside Cares and if I'd be interested in a position. And that led to a, what they call a PRN as needed nurse, which then led to a part-time position and how I ended up at Marion House when one of the other nurses retired. Wonderful. How about you, Fiona? Well, in my case, I started out in nursing when I very first stepped into the field in very high tech, limb reattachment, post-operative care, and then went from that to working in medical missions in rural Ecuador uh, in the Andes Mountains. And so really two different worlds all of a sudden and found that that community health aspect in, in Ecuador was far more aligned with the gifts of of mercy and compassion and um, cross-cultural abilities and things like that that God had given me. And so I, I did that for a long time, for about 10 years, and then ended up in more global health type of roles um, in compassion-based ministries um, in Africa, South America, and Asia. And then we moved to Colorado Springs, and I thought, well, what do you do now as the, <laughs> this, this nurse who's very kind of community-based, uh, just, it, I so much enjoy working um, with people who are kind of on the edges and helping them not feel so much on the edge. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? Where do I fit? And then just looking at job positions that were open, this faith community nurse, and I'm like, wait, what's that? <laughs> I think I could do that. Um, and so I applied, was accepted, and yeah, just like uh, Velda started out working just um, on that on-call basis, filling in, and then eventually um, the Family Connections and Catholic Charities and our whole team seeing this need of uh, perhaps putting a permanent nurse over at Family Connections, and that's that's where I am. Well, I got to tell you, it's fascinating to hear about how people f on a journey find their way t into a specific career, and you know, I'm always interested in you know why they serve um, because obviously our clients get you know so much benefit from that service, but we get that benefit too, because we enjoy serving as well. Um, and so it's really nice to kind of hear that journey and, and those twists and turns and how it ultimately got you really in something that, I'm, that you enjoy, mm -hmm. that you enjoy doing. Um, so this show, um, you know, it's the new year, we called it a, a, a new year, a new show, um, a healthy new you. And so we thought it would be perfect to talk to some of our medical providers because you guys do so much for the people that we serve. Um, so tell me a little bit more about what is it that you do at the Marion House campus and at the Helen Hunt campus? Well, each day is different. Um, I mostly see clients who are there to have lunch or are there to see the jobs department. So the majority of my clients that I see are people who are walking onto the campus, needing help, needing lunch, and find out that I'm there. And then the word of mouth spreads, oh, Nurse Velda helped me with this. You should go see Nurse Velda. Or somebody in the jobs department, one of the case managers is helping somebody apply for a job and they need glasses or they need dental work and, say, and they say, oh, you need to go see Nurse Velda. Um, I do 
since COVID started, I'm getting a lot more referrals from dentists and doctor's offices and um, other resources in the, in the county who know that Catholic Charities has a nurse on site and 211. So since COVID started, I'm getting a lot more of those email referrals through 211 um, or somebody's calling to help ask for rent and also saying they can't pay for their medications because they lost their job and their insurance. So in the last year and a half, where I'm seeing clients from is changing a little bit. So I'm still seeing clients on a walk-in basis, but I'm seeing more and more via phone, email, and doing things that way because of COVID, which has expanded my reach significantly in, in helping more people who are working poor, I think. Mm -hmm. So help with anything from dental to vision, co-pays for doctor's office visits. We just paid for a special um, hearing test, and that was kind of a collaboration between Fiona and I, referred from Family Connections um, for a child for before they went back into school. And so there's just lots of different um, areas of health that we help with, not just co-pays for doctor visits or medications, but vision, dental, hearing, um, counseling, men metal, mental health resources and referrals and substance use referrals. Yeah, and um, much of what I do at Family Connections is very similar to, to what Velda does. I tend to work more uh, predominantly with families, um, so a lot more um, needs that kids have or that their parents have in that context of family, of helping the parents be able to provide well and to care well for their kids, and also mostly Spanish speaking. Um, and some of that has to do with just the clientele that go to uh, Family Connections at the Helen Hunt campus. But then also I'm, I'm plugged in with the Catholic Charities English as Second Language program. And I'm there kind of as the school nurse. Mm -hmm. And so it's very much the case that people go to their English classes. And just like um, somebody in school might be like, I need to see the nurse. <laughs> and they come and see me. And it's not because of a stomach ache, you know, not an acute thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I can't see the board. Can you help me get glasses? Or there is something going on in their family. They have a new diagnosis they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Or they just simply don't know how to access health care here, especially for our neighbors who are more recent immigrants in the country. Um, just helping them understand how it works mm -hmm. uh, in this setting. So I've done whole group classes at different levels of English and in Spanish for the students on accessing healthcare in Colorado Springs, where they can go depending on their insurance and things like that, um, how to stay healthy, um, appropriate use of the emergency room in, in the United States, which is different from other countries. What you expect from the emergency room. So that comes as a shock to people of what the emergency room is for here compared to other places. And then uh, a lot of teaching on COVID, mm -hmm. uh, general symptoms and where to get tested, where to get vaccinated, things like that. Um, so, but then also that helping people access primary care, vision, dental. Mm -hmm. One of the other things I really like about this site at Marion House is that we have student nurses from UCCS and other um, nursing schools in the area. Majority is UCCS students. And they're seniors, they're ready to get out there and start working, but they come here for their community health rotation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's just, I just love working with the students and how they come in, they wanna do ICU, ER, hands-on, high tech, and they kinda come here and have to take a deep breath but then they understand where the people that they're seeing in the ER over and over again are in the ICU who are so terribly sick because their diabetes is out of control. And they see where those clients and patients are coming from and where they're being sent back to. So yes, you need to go and elevate your leg 20 minutes every hour and drink lots of fluids while you're having to be out on the street. How is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's another really unique aspect of, of being here at Marion House and working with those student nurses. And then they're great advocates for us when they get into the hospitals in our, in our community. That, well, I know they've been such a help. I mean, just with our vaccination yes. clinics, um, you know, they're always here helping out, uh, moving that line through of getting people their flu shots or, 
or whatever shots you know, we're offering yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you also do things like um, help people manage their prescriptions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the copays. You know, I, I've heard you talk um, many times about how so often, because of the financial burden mm -hmm. of some of these medications, that you know people will try to stretch them, yeah. so they won't use them the way they're intended. And um, you know, you might have someone who's supposed to use the medication two or three times a day, and they may be using it once every other day because mm -hmm. they just can't afford. It. That's where the copay comes into yeah. effect. But you also help people manage the way they're supposed to take their their medications, so that they they're not over medicated or under medicated, which you know either way is can be a big problem. And many of our clients don't have regular doctors. They go to the ER, they go to urgent care, they, they, yeah, their blood pressure is high, so they get on one medication, then they go to the ER, get another medication, and all of a sudden they're on three medications, and they really only need to be on one. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting better now that we have electronic medical records and doctors can see what other people have prescribed. But um, sometimes just sitting down and then pulling out their pills out of their backpack or out of their bag from home if they're, say, an elderly person living at home and just going through and saying, oh, why are you on this blood pressure, this blood pressure, and this blood pressure medicine? <laughs> and, um, and explaining, oh, this one they want you to take just at night and not during the day. Mm -hmm. And really asking them point blank, what time of day are you taking this medication? How often are you taking it? Oh, I couldn't see that it was twice a day. So let's get you glasses so right. you can see your, or yes, you've been to so many different doctors that you have way too many medications right. and then trying to get them set up with a, a primary care provider. And sometimes it is the case, it happens to all of us when we go into that medical setting and you hear something for the first time, people will come and say, okay, I went to the doctor last mm -hmm. week and she told me that I have prediabetes. What does that mean? What do I need to do? And you know that their provider very faithfully and thoroughly explained it to them, but they're just not in that space to hear it at that time. Or sometimes even to demedicalize it and just mm -hmm. explain, this is, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, we get that opportunity to go back and help strengthen people's understanding of their conditions. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know over the years um, that you've been able to expand your services to fill some of those really obvious gaps. I mean, whether it's uh, because there's either more funding or through more support um, of the community and the medical facilities that um, there are a lot of a lot more things that you guys can help with. Where do you, you know, I guess my question is, is what are some of those gaps that have been filled that have just really made huge differences? And where are some of the gaps that still exist? Um, when I first started as a faith community nurse, there was no Affordable Care Act and there was no Medicaid really for um, adults. It was only moms and children. And then we started getting Medicaid for people earning under a certain amount and that provided dental care. So we're not seeing as much need for fillings and cleanings because people are getting that done now. Um, so instead of just piecemealing, pulling a tooth when it's infected, we can help people do more preventative care. Mm -hmm. But then we can also access the Trimble Fund, which is local through El Paso County Elks Club, and the AV Hunter Fund and the Friends of Man Fund, and that's statewide. So we're able to do more with that, with those funds, because before they would give us some money, but it's still, we don't pay only 50% of what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. Now we can also access free eye care for an exam, but the eyeglasses still need to be paid for, but we're not having to pay for an exam and eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. So that stretches our dollars and we can help more people. So, um, and then we can help people who are uninsured, who don't have access to Medicaid or are working poor and they can't afford the insurance. So then, yeah, we can help them with an eye exam and pay for more for the working poor. So it, it's, it's just shifting those funds. And I just feel like I'm, I'm touching and helping more people mm -hmm. instead of taking so much time to fit so many moving pieces together of a puzzle. I might only have to fit two or three moving pieces together instead mm -hmm. of five or six moving pieces. 
Well, and you and I were talking earlier about um, a young woman mm -hmm. who we both were acquainted with years ago, mm -hmm. uh, yes. before the ACA, and um, you know she was a victim of domestic violence yes. and um, had been hit in the mouth, and mm -hmm. so she had lost some teeth. Some of the teeth were broken. Um, her gums were infected all the time. She couldn't look at you and talk. She was so embarrassed, um, and she was in pain, a, a great deal of pain. Yeah. And, um, and I remember you and another staff person were juggling, trying to figure out if they could get a dentist to pull the teeth and then if they could find another dentist mm -hmm. who might do some implants. I mean, because that's a real expensive yes. job. And, I, you know, kudos to y'all that y'all just step, kept on it. And mm -hmm. eventually um, she um, was able to get some implants. And she, it was amazing. You don't think about this as a barrier um, to stability because she was so self-conscious that she couldn't look at you. She, when she would go on job interviews, if she could make herself do it, she wouldn't make eye contact, so she wouldn't get the job. Um, and once she got her teeth fixed, the amount of confidence mm -hmm. that she just exuded, and she got a job, she uh, was able to move her family to a greater level of stability. Mm -hmm. uh, and people just don't think about those barriers. There's so many barriers that are connected with so many different things that you just don't think about. Um, and I think a lot of people don't really think about um, mm -hmm. that as a barrier. Yeah, absolutely. And a case right now of a, a man who he has, I think, three or four kids at home. He's married. He works really hard, but he, he's not eligible for Medicaid. And he needs surgery to save his eyesight, which is going to be about two and a half thousand dollars. But for him, it was an insurmountable amount of money mm -hmm. that he's just like, I can't. And so he was facing the reality of losing his sight and then not being able to work, not being able to provide for his family and just causes this whole domino chain of poor circumstances mm -hmm. or not just himself, but his whole family. And so kind of because he is not eligible for these insurance resources to then reach out to community partners and say, come on, people, <laughs> mm -hmm. we, can, we can help here. And yeah. so Catholic Charities and Lions Clubs and others kind of putting our heads together and mm -hmm. saying, yeah, we can help this man. Mm -hmm. And what a blessing that is of not just saving his sight, but saving the well-being of his whole family for well, long term. Because it's all about stability. Yes. You know, you, the, the breadwinner loses the job and the next thing, the family's homeless. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it is, it's, a, it's just a series of events, events and downward spirals and it can all start, we always say mm -hmm. that, you know, people are doing fine and what knocks them off is the loss of a job or a medical. Yes. Um, and, you know, those medical issues just, I mean, you know, as you age, they're gonna be there. Yes. Um, and so it's, it's really important to understand that it's not just the medical issues, it's the financial issues and it's the hope. You know, maybe they can help me. And they generally don't come with any expectation. It's just that maybe, just maybe. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to say, yes, we can help you is just tremendous. And even today I helped somebody with the flu shot, and she's an older lady, and she says, I just come here for lunch. It was so easy to get my flu shot here. And you listened to me. Because I hadn't seen her in a while, and, and we just caught up, and she said, just for listening to me today. And, and she was just really afraid of this new Omicron virus and just had some questions and she's not on the internet and doesn't have a cell phone or anything like that. And um, so just being able to listen is huge. And like you know, said, they come really with low expectations. It's like, oh, they said you, I should call you, but you probably can't help. I'm like, hold on, don't, yep. don't give up yet. Well, you know, what you're talking about is, you know, you heal the mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. So what you talked about is, you know, we talked about the, the you know, healing the body with, mm -hmm. with uh, the works and listening, that listening here, healing the mind. But you also heal the soul. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all about faith. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to me a little bit about that faith component mm -hmm. that you bring um, to this position because, you know, I walk by and I see you pray for somebody and it, the spirituality, I think, sometimes can be overlooked. Yeah, we definitely, you know, when people's first encounter with us is one of a physical health need, and we pay attention to that, of course. But then in the context of that relationship and that time together, we try to pour out all we can in terms of respecting them with dignity and providing um, hope and 
treating them as a person with value. And in that type of encounter, you do lean into that spirituality of the person. Um, just even asking, how are you coping? Where are you finding your hope? Yeah. And that answer reveals a lot about their own spirituality and their own um, where their faith is placed. Mm -hmm. And so then to to move from that physical encounter into caring for that, um, really leaning into that spiritual care, intentional spiritual care, it comes very natural mm -hmm. in that context of relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's as you said, just it's about caring for the whole person, their mind, body, and soul, and not leaving any of those unattended. Intentional and finding and praying with them, mm -hmm. and if, if they want to, and just asking God to go before them because mm -hmm. it's really, really a challenging situation. That Makes them cry out for help in the first place, and it often is beyond what we can do, but we have to come alongside them, support them, and entrust God for the outcome. Mm -hmm. And in praying with them. Because like Fiona said, it's like we, we sometimes we know we're just going to have one or two times to really interact with this person. And I feel like sometimes we're just shooting a fire hose of water of all the information, but writing it down on our plan of care and saying, OK, these are five things that I think really we can help with. What is the most important for you right now? And what I think might be number one, they might think is number five. So we reorder that together. and then. A lot of times just saying at the end, would you like to pray over this? We discussed a lot today and sometimes our minds just keep going and going and we just need to calm things down. And God's spirit helps me do that. Would you mind or would you want to pray together mm -hmm. over this? And nine times out of 10, oh, would you do that with me? Of course, you know, it'd be my privilege. That's why I'm here. And then praying over that plan of care and not like you said, we're not proselytizing. We're not saying, OK, God, come save. We're just saying, God, as Fiona said, go before Amy today as she goes to the doctor's office later this week, as she gets her glasses, as she starts taking her medications on a more regular basis. May that help her feel better and give her more strength. So we just kind of pray over that plan of care and that God would walk alongside her if that's what she needs. Would he come underneath of her if that's what she needs? That all that is wrapped up together. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's the whole package. Mm -hmm. It really is. And the work you guys do is just so important. And we are just privileged to Catholic Charities to have you at two of our facilities mm -hmm. um, helping our clients in the way that you help. Mm -hmm. So ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I think that you gave, you gave us some great information. Um, you gave us a new insight into the work that you do and why you do it. And I think that's really what's important. So join us next month, um, the second Tuesday of the month, to learn more about another program of Catholic Charities. Good night.